Hi, I am Dr. Sridhar Kalyana Sandaram. In this video, we will be looking at a very important topic which is warning or danger signs in newborn babies and this relates both to babies in hospitals where healthcare professionals are looking after them as well as the babies at home where the parents are responsible for their baby's care. <coughs> It's very important to identify the danger signs early and seek help, uh, mainly because the babies can worsen very acutely and uh, downhill course, uh, which leads to severe morbidity is possible. The other important point is that the danger signs that we'll be talking about are mostly non-specific and in the premature or low birth weight babies, it could overlap with the ex accepted range of normal. So it's not very easy to be clear that it's definitely abnormal. So it's very important to recognize and keep an eye on those. The first and most common danger sign is lethargy or poor feeding. Lethargy is just reduced activity relative to the baseline of the baby. So it's very important to listen carefully to the parent or the nurse who is involved in the care. And we should never ignore that because they are the ones looking after the baby continuously. and <clears throat> Sometimes it may be their gut feeling that tells them that something is not right with the baby. So if there is any concern, we should monitor the baby closely, including all the vital parameters. And if we have a significant enough concern to avoid delay, we should consider initiating the sepsis workup, uh, including blood gas, blood glucose and investigations for the sepsis screen while we are continuing to monitor the baby and deciding on whether we need to start antibiotics. So we shouldn't delay, in other words, when there is a serious concern. Prolonged capillary filling time is uh, usually checked by pressing over the skin of the mid-sternum with the ball of the thumb for 5 seconds or so, so that it blanches. After it blanches, the thumb is lifted and the time taken for refilling the capillaries and return to the original skin color is noted. The normal is 2 seconds or less or less than equal to 3 seconds. So uh, you should keep in mind that it can be prolonged due to hypothermia and peripheral vasoconstriction and peripheral vasoconstriction is also an accompaniment of uh, hypothermia as a response of the baby. It's very important to reassess the baby at regular intervals and a capillary filling time which is prolonged may indicate circulatory compromise and might initiate the need for fluid resuscitation. And if there is inadequate response and you are fairly confident that there is not a cardiac condition underlying, you may need to repeat the fluid bolus if the capillary filling time is still prolonged after the first bolus. So it can be guiding us to pick up a circulatory compromise and also to guide us in treating and further treating. Respiratory concerns are another very important danger sign. The baby could be tachypneic where the respiratory rate is more than or equal to 60 breaths per minute. There could be other features of respiratory distress. I would refer you to the playlist on respiratory disorders where I have discussed most of these conditions. So the baby could have grunting, subcostal and intercostal recessions. The baby could have apnea where there is cessation of breathing for longer than 15 to 20 seconds or it may be associated with bradycardia and desaturation in which case it need not last for 15 seconds even. Uh, any respiratory compromise can go on to respiratory failure and so we should be very careful. We connect the baby to the pulse oximeter, keep the baby prepared for CPAP if there is respiratory distress or if the baby has gone apneic uh, or appears not to be coping with just non-invasive, you may need to start IPPV as well. So these babies can deteriorate very rapidly and be prepared to intubate and support their airways. We should also consider blood gas review and chest x-ray and further investigations and management will depend on what is the most likely underlying cause for this respiratory distress. The baby can present uh, with temperature instability as a marker of a significant underlying problem and hypothermia is more likely than fever in the newborn period especially in the low birth weight or premature babies. Their ability to maintain their body temperature is limited their source of brown fat is less, their body surface area is more relatively and their posture is one of extension relatively in the small babies especially when they are sick and hypotonic and the temperature drops quickly. So a temperature below 36.5 degrees Celsius is very common 
and we may need low reading thermometers to accurately assess the degree of hypothermia because your intervention will depend on how severe the hypothermia is and once you have initiated the treatment the response if it is poor that indicates a poor prognosis as well and as i mentioned earlier in term babies fever may be a manifestation of an infection it can be a viral or a bacterial infection most of the babies are expected to pass meconium by 24 hours if they don't pass tools by 24 hours try rectal stimulation either with the rectal thermometer or by a lubricated feeding tube and if the baby doesn't pass even with that you may need to call a surgeon who may do a pr evaluation <coughs> could be hatsprung's disease or similar Again, urine is passed by 24 to 48 hours and it's very important that the team gets into the habit of recording the baby's passing urine at the time of delivery. Many babies pee at the time of delivery and if this is not recorded, you may be unnecessarily worried because once a baby has passed urine in the first uh, day or at the time of delivery, the pathway is clear. It's only the feeding that needs to be established. So we have to review the antenatal scan findings and we ensure adequate feeding and if the urine output is still delayed, we would need further intervention in these cases. Some posets are normal and some babies have mucusy uh, spit ups on the first day, mostly related to irritation of the stomach with the gastric fluid, the liquor that they have swallowed. <clears throat> if there was meconium stain liquor, for example, it's more common. If it keeps persisting, we could consider a stomach wash with normal saline ones. But if the vomiting persists or if the vomit tends to be greenish and especially if this is associated with failure to pass meconium and abdominal distension, intestinal obstruction is a serious possibility and we need to do the abdomen x-ray and contact the surgeon as needed. A green vomit by itself could indicate serious conditions uh, like malrotation or valvulus as the green color is coming from the bile indicating an obstruction beyond the second part of duodenum. So even if the baby is relatively normal looking, since these conditions can worsen very rapidly and we might lose a significant length of bowel if there is a delay in intervention with malrotation, for example, with valvulus, we should be contacting the surgeon as quickly as possible. The normal stool pattern in babies is very variable and in the babies in the first 3-4 days as the feed is starting to get established, a physiologic lactose intolerance may start and the baby may have a frequent stooling pattern which is a little watery but these babies are otherwise well looking and they tend to feed well they tend to pass urine well and the weight gain has started establishing by this stage so unless the baby looks sick you don't need to label it as diarrhea but if it's an explosive watery stool and there is a history of gastroenteritis in the family the baby looks unwell or there is fever or other concerns you have to think of sepsis as an underlying cause and we have to treat these babies very carefully as if they are septic and hydration needs to be maintained carefully as well. Cyanosis is bluish discoloration of the skin and the mucosa. If there is peripheral cyanosis or acrocyanosis in the extremities only, it's quite normal in the first few days, especially in the first few hours after delivery. And uh, this is due to the slight temperature fluctuations and vasoconstriction. However, central sinuses is a very important danger sign. It's seen all over, especially on the lips and the tongue where it is quite easily visible. And because the babies have a high hematocrit sinuses, it gets visible quite easily as well. Central sinuses indicates underlying cardiac or respiratory disease and it almost always requires prompt attention and appropriate referral. We do the critical heart disease screening which is by the saturation testing by 24 hours and these are likely to pick up these babies before they become overtly cyanotic as well. Even though jaundice is a very common problem, significant jaundice can still be an important factor that may lead to permanent brain injury unless we have a specific system to monitor the jaundice and pick it up. So it's very important we screen the babies for jaundice and discharge and arrange regular follow-up visits accordingly. The most important part is to educate the family on the importance of appropriate follow-up at any stage if they notice significant jaundice. It may happen that you have discharged the baby from the clinic because the jaundice was trending down, but you still need to inform them that if there is a worsening at any stage, they should report because there are conditions like G6PD deficiency where the jaundice may increase suddenly. And uh, we should also focus on the part that they shouldn't rely on sunlight exposure alone as many families in the community say that sunlight is enough for jaundice and this false reassurance may prevent them coming to seek help as well. 
Most babies lose 8 to 12 percent weight in the first few days and the premature babies may lose even more but they are more likely to be monitored in the hospital with better support for the feeding. But when there is an excess weight loss, there is a high risk of hypernatremia and this can injure the brain as well, especially if you are not correcting it carefully. So we should ensure adequate feeding support, close monitoring of the feeding and urine output and also measure the serum, sodium and bilirubin in these cases. Once we decide on the intervention, it could be express breast milk if the mother is starting to produce milk or it could be a combination of express breast milk and formula. Uh, and you need to bring the baby a day or so into the clinic if everything else is normal and the results are normal. But we should make sure that this follow-up is ensured and the weight loss should be reversed in these situations. So it's a danger sign. It could potentially be serious and brain-threatening. We should be careful about it. Sometimes a congenital malformation may present with uh, symptoms like excessive drooling and a newborn baby with excessive drooling, frothy saliva, choking and cyanosis during the first feed should alert the staff to a diagnosis of obstruction of the upper GA tract and the overflow of the milk and saliva and the regurgitation of secretions can lead to aspiration through the fistulous tract in these cases and lead to a serious pneumonia. We should try to pass a red ripper catheter and if it doesn't go beyond 8 to 10 centimeters from the mouth and we do an x-ray which shows the coiling back. It will confirm the diagnosis of esophageal atresia or tracheoesophageal fistula. Another important diagnosis that can be picked up by a clinical sign early on is where a baby becomes cyanotic when the baby is quiet with the mouth closed, <clears throat> but then the baby starts uh, picking up color once the baby starts crying with his duskiness clearing. So this usually means that the baby is not able to breathe through the nose when the mouth is closed. And as babies are obligate nose breathers, Cyanosis sets in and then we have to uh, when the baby is stimulated and cries the cyanosis clears as they can then breathe through the nose breathe through the mouth So we should make us think of uh, Quinal atresia, which is usually bilateral in these cases presenting early We mentioned about the critical heart disease screening to di diagnose heart disease as well and heart disease can also be suspected when the baby has significant tachypnea, but there is not much in drawing the baby may be cyanotic as we discussed and the baby may have features of heart failure like tachycardia, murmur and hepatomegaly. The murmur may be an incidental finding and it's also important to check the femoral pulses in these babies. Of course, the presence of the femoral pulse in the first 24-48 hours doesn't rule out a coarctation of aorta because the PDA may still be open and these babies may present with shock or distress after the next few days. <clears throat> when this presentation happens, we should think of a duct dependent systemic circulation. And when a baby presents with shock towards the end of the first week, we have four main important diagnoses that we need to rule out. Sepsis is always a possibility in such cases and baby can be moribund in these settings. Critical duct dependent congenital heart disease like coarctation of aorta or hypoplastic left heart syndrome can present this way. We could also have an inborn error of metabolism uh, like amino acid disorders or organic acidemia or the ureocycle disorders which may present and we need to uh, work up on those lines when we are not sure. We need to keep these babies on just dextrose, stop the feeds and send the workup that you'll be sending. Of course, keep in mind that any of the other diagnosis mentioned here could be there as well. And we could also have the salt losing type of congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Uh, suppose you have an uh, over virilized male or an ambiguous genitalia and uh, over virilized female, then we have to think of uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. The electrolyte disturbances uh, showing typically hyponatremia, hyperkalemia would support that along with hypoglycemia. Of course, it's not very specific, but you should be having a high index of suspicion in such cases. So uh, the inborn errors of metabolism could also have non-specific presentations and often these overlap with all the danger signs we discussed earlier and sepsis could present with any of these as well.